Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel Chemical Engineer. I am Sahil Yadav and in this video we are going to see about different types of losses in a cooling tower. We are going to design a full cooling tower by the end of this playlist. In previous video we have seen about the efficiency, how to calculate it and other related term on the basic how cooling tower works. In this video we are going to see the losses of water that are occurring in a cooling tower so mainly there are four types of losses that are occurring in a cooling tower first will be evaporation loss second will be drift loss third will be blowdown loss and fourth will be miscellaneous other losses that are occurring due to the operational issues in a cooling tower okay so in this video we are mainly focusing on evaporation losses in a cooling tower and how to calculate the losses okay so this will be our main motive of this video so if you are new to this channel please subscribe to the channel and also join us on telegram chemical engineer 2120 so in cooling tower evaporation loss consists or comprises of 80 percent of total loss other type of losses will be included in like 15 to 17 percent in a blowdown loss and other other drift and other losses so this is how loss is divided in a cooling tower okay so let us see in a pictorial form how these losses are recognized in a cooling tower okay so this is a cooling tower here cold hot water is sprayed on the top of this packing and this is some coolant flowing through tube okay so let us start with the evaporation loss so first loss is the evaporation loss so as you all know that water can remain in a vapor as well as liquid form in normal atmosphere and conversion energy from liquid to vapor for water is very less so we can easily convert water into a vapor so when in this heat exchange when a water droplet comes in a contact with a hot surface or a hot object it tends to evaporate or a sudden change in a temperature causes evaporation of a water so water evaporates and with the help of this air it is carried away from the cooling tower and those type of losses are known as evaporation losses okay second type of losses are known as drift losses so drift as the name suggests drift means something that is moved using a force okay so something that is done using a force is known as drift loss okay so in cooling tower water will be carried away by the force of impeller or by the striking on the curved surfaces it will be carried out of the cooling tower so those type of losses of water are known as drift loss and the third type of loss is known as blowdown loss so blowdown this is in incorporated with the quality parameter of a water that is flowing through the cooling tower so this we will see in the upcoming slide when to do blowdown how to do blowdown how much blowdown should be done that we will see in the next video in this video we are focusing on evaporation losses so let us see the equation of evaporation losses so evaporation loss equation is rr multiplied by cp multiplied by delta t multiplied by evaporation factor divided by 556 okay so you might not remember this equation and you should be clear that this equation will give you the loss of a water in terms of meter cube per hour because all these terms that we are using is in meter cube per hour and this is the standard every company follows this standard okay in order to simplify this equation let me give you the simplified equation so simplified equation will be 0. 
डबल जीरो वन फाइव थ्री मल्टीप्लाइड बाय डेल्टा टी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय रिसर्कुलेशन रेट ओके सो डोंट रिमेंबर दिस इक्वेशन रिमेंबर दिस इक्वेशन पॉइंट डबल जीरो वन फाइव थ्री इंटू डेल्टा टी मल्टीप्लाई बाय रिसर्कुलेशन रेट ओके नाउ लेट अस सी व्हाट आर डिफरेंट टर्म्स दैट आर इन द इक्वेशन so 0.015003 is nothing but a constant or you can call it as a evaporation factor it is nothing but calculated from this into cp okay so this is how we can calculate this 0.00153 don't need to remember it but remember directly 0.00153 second is delta t so delta t is nothing but a temperature difference of a hot water that is going in so t in minus t out so the water that is going inside a cooling tower and getting hot uh, that getting cold so difference between both of them is known as delta t here in this equation uh, this hot water is sprinkled suppose at temperature t i and from here the water is supplied to the plant at to temperature so the difference between both of them is delta t third is recirculation rate so in order to find the recirculation rate you you should know the designing of a cooling tower so while designing a cooling tower we focus on various parts like how much amount of water is required and how much cooling is required in a plant so on the basis of that we decide a pump like this much amount of flow should be passed through a pump so that is known as recirculation rate so you directly go to the pump that is giving up water to the plant from a cooling tower to the plant there will be a some pump on that pump find its capacity like q q should be given and it is in the range of like 55 to 120 meter cube per hour okay so this is the recirculation rate that is a rate at which we are recirculating the water from cooling tower to the plant and plant to the cooling tower that is should be in meter cube per hour so recirculation rate multiplied by delta t multiplied by 0.00153 this will give you the evaporative water losses okay so let us take an example suppose in one day 25 kL of water is added in your or newly added in your cooling tower so after one day if this water uh, if this amount of what is much amount of water is lost then 20 kL around 20 kL will be through evaporative losses 4 kL will be through uh blow down that is based on a quality that we will see in next video and some 1 kL will be from the other losses okay so this is all about evaporative water loss calculation i hope you are clear with it if you have any doubt please comment down or ask in a telegram group all right so thank you for watching thank you